Well, good evening, Brother Jerry James with you here tonight. This is a Thursday night church service. I hope you've had a good day today. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we're going to share some in the scripture with you shortly. I, I'm going to give just a few minutes for some folks to come up online and hopefully it'll be an encouragement to you, maybe a help and a blessing. And, uh, as always, we, we tell you that if you have any prayer requests, uh, put them in the comment section here. Let us know that we can pray for you. Let us know that we can uh, help you in any way we can. If you've never trusted Jesus Christ to be your Savior, we would encourage you to do that now while you have an opportunity before it's too late. And uh, let Jesus make you brand new. Let him birth you into his family. And what a difference it'll make in your life, what a difference it'll make in, the, in your relationships with those around you. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's that's what happens when you trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Hey, Lee, good to see you up watching. Uh, I appreciate the message that Lee preached for us Tuesday night. It is such a blessing to have a son that's serving God like he is. And I thank God for the church where he is, where he's uh, assistant pastor, associate pastor there. And I appreciate the work that he's doing with the schools over there. But uh, I'm, I'm so thankful for that. But I want to ask and encourage you that if you've never trusted Jesus, today would be a great day to do that. Just let him come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, and uh, make a brand new creation out of you. And if you'd like to know how to do that, if you're not sure, we'll be glad to help you in any way we can. If you just put your uh, your prayer request and your questions and and concerns, whatever you may have, put them in the comment section here, and we'll do our best to respond to them. Or if you'd like to send me a personal message, uh, just Jerry James at Facebook, just uh, look on Messenger and send that to me. I'll be glad to, to respond to you as soon as possible. Um, I apologize for wiping my eyes. We, uh, when the weather turns cooler like this, it seems like my eyes begin to water. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, give some prayer requests that we have tonight. And hopefully uh, we'll have some more folks come up. If not, maybe if they're watching a little later. But uh, Mary had asked us to pray for Ed as a truck driver who is out west. His truck is broke down. He has a sick baby. So please pray for Ed, if you will. And Donovan, Donovan Padlock is in his early 20s. He's in Louisiana in ICU. Uh, please pray for Donovan. Scott Childs, or his Aunt Betty, is in hospice, and we'd uh, request you to pray, ask you to pray for them and the family especially. We've got many, many unspoken prayer requests that have come up, and I pray that you'll uh, remember these in prayer, if you would. And I'll ask you tonight, if you would, to remember my in-laws, Sophie's mom and dad. It's Ruth and Bud Littleton. Uh, Ruth had her first chemo treatment yesterday and uh, everything went well and we're thankful for that and uh, this morning early around five or a little after bud tripped and fell and he broke his nose and his nose started bleeding they took him took him to the emergency room and we spent some time with him there but they got the bleeding stopped and it said that his, they said his nose was broken and he's going to have to go see some uh some specialists about getting that fixed. But if you would just pray for Bud and uh, pray for Ruth, he will be 86 next month and Ruth is 82. So just remember them if you will. And I'd ask you too, if you'll remember my thumb, <laughs> uh, I've got to go back to the doctor tomorrow. They, the doctor told me the other day that they're going to cut a lot of the flesh off where the blood flow has stopped. And uh, so I'm not real sure if they'll do that tomorrow or if they'll send me to a general surgeon. But if you would, just help me pray about that. There's uh, never realized just how many things you need your thumb to do. But so just pray for us, if you will. Remember these prayer requests. We're going to go ahead and pray now and ask God to do that. Father, we love you. We thank you for the blessings you've given us. We ask you, Lord, to be with these that I've mentioned, Lord, in the prayer request. Be with those that may be listening, Lord, that have needs or have uh, problems, have storms they're facing. We just ask you to meet every need according to your precious will. And Father, we just want to give you the glory for the opportunity to be able to preach tonight on the on this broadcast. I pray that you'll let it touch hearts. 
And Father, those that may be listening live and those that may be listening later, Lord, uh, as it's archived, I just ask you to touch every heart, encourage us, strengthen us in these days that we'll be able to serve you a little better. And Father, we'll give you the glory for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to look first in uh, Matthew chapter number nine, and we're going to read just one verse. The Bible says, and behold, they brought to him, talking about Jesus, a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, what I want to try to do in the New Testament, there are seven times this phrase is mentioned, be of good cheer. And I want to show you the reasons that Jesus said this to the people there. This first one, these men had great faith that God could heal them, that God would heal their friend. And so they went to Jesus and the Bible says, hey, James, Jimmy G, good to see you, brother. Uh, they brought this man to Jesus and the Bible tells us, "Be," he said, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And this day and age, when there's enough sadness in the world to go around to touch everyone's lives and hearts, and with the political situation as it is, and, and everything else that's going on, there's enough to cry about, enough to be sad about. But I believe we need to be of good cheer. Why? Because that our sins have been forgiven us. Now, the Bible also says in Luke 10 and verse number 20, when the disciples were sent out by Jesus, to preach to the people, to heal the sick and, and, and all those things, they came back and they were excited because they said, Lord, even the devils, are we can cast them out. We can do all manner of good things. We heal the sick and we've done that through your power and we're excited about that. But Jesus looked at them and he said, notwithstanding in this, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Be excited because God has forgiven you of your sins. Be excited because you have a home everlasting in heaven because that's what God did for us. If you've trusted him as your Lord and Savior, the Bible tells us that our destination has been settled. We're saved eternally. The Bible tells me that I, Jesus said in John 10, 28 and 29, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. Isn't it good to know that God has you sealed up in the palm of his hand? Even in the midst of the darkest days that we face, we can rejoice. We can be of good cheer because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life and we're in heaven today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What a Savior we have. I'm so thankful that God has given us uh, this, this good cheer that we can be excited about what God's done for us. Now, I want you to look the second place. It's found over in Matthew chapter number 14 and verse number 27. The Bible says, but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer and as I be not afraid. And the storms in your life, when it feels like the waves are coming over the side and you're in danger of being swamped and carried out to sea or drowned even, the Bible tells us Jesus can speak sweet peace to your soul and he can tell you, be of good cheer. It is I. And I'm glad to tell you, I've, I've experienced this. I've gone down that road. I know what it's like to face dangers and troubles. As a matter of fact, my son was there. Oh, with all of my kids were there when I was in the hospital a couple of years ago and the doctors didn't really give us a whole lot of hope that I was going to be able to come home. Uh, they, they were talking, they put me on life support. Things looked really bad. There was, uh, you know, pretty much had just given me up that I, that said he's going to, he's going to die. He's going to die in this hospital room. But I'm thankful there was another doctor in the room and that doctor was Dr. Jesus and he came to where I was and he told me not now. It's not time to go. And he whispered sweet peace to my family. My son recorded the message the doctor gave the family that day, and it wouldn't encourage it at all. But Jesus said, he's not done with me. Therefore, he left me here for a reason. He left me here for a purpose. And I'd like to say that purpose is to encourage people, those that are going through trials, going through valleys. I've been there. 
I've been through these valleys. What I'm telling you tonight is not something I got out of a book. This is th- These are things I've experienced. These are things I've lived through. These are things that I've seen God's grace in our lives. I've seen God touch our families. I've seen God raise us up from the bed of sickness and affliction. You tell me this, this evening, things are bad, things are horrible. Maybe they are. But I've got a Savior that can whisper sweet peace and tell you to be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. In Mark chapter number 6 and verse number 50, the Bible says, For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Now in another place in the book of Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, the Bible says, And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, the disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Now he's told his disciples, we're going to the other side. They didn't realize there was a storm coming. Jesus did. But the Bible says he laid down, went to sleep in the hinder part of the boat. The storm came. The disciples were so afraid, so scared that they were going to die, that at one point they woke him up and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Have you ever been to that place in your life where you said, God, do you even care about me? Lord, do you even care that we're about to die, that we're going down, we're going under? Do you not care that we need help, we need deliverance, we need guidance? That's when Jesus says, be of good cheer. He told you, he told me, he told his disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. When Jesus saved you and sealed you, the Bible says we're sealed to the day of redemption. When he did that, he said, we're going home. We're, I'm going to take you to heaven. We're going home. That's why John, Jesus told us in John chapter number 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's the God we're serving. That's the Savior that said, he called me by name. Amen? That's the Savior that said, be of good cheer. The storms are going to get rough. It may be to the point that, like he told the disciples, why is it that you have no faith? They didn't have a little faith. They had no faith. They lost all hope that they would survive. I've been in those places in my life where I lost all hope, where I didn't feel like we could make it another day, where the sickness was so great, or where the valleys were so deep, or the, the valleys were so long and dark and all that. All those things, we, we've, I've been in those places. And when God whispers to your heart, be of good cheer. You can rest assured that the same God that said, I'm going to take you home, will take you through this storm. The Bible says in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why is that? Because thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm glad that we've got a Savior that cares what you're dealing with. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about the heartaches, the trials, the the spiritual problems the family problems, the uh, monetary problems, financial situations. He knows all those things. He knows them. And he still loves us. And he still whispers, be of good cheer. There's no place to quit. There's no place to jump out of the boat. There's no place to try to swim to the other side. In the midst of the storm, you try to do it yourself, you're going to drown anyway. So why don't you just let God hold you by the hand? He said, be of good cheer. He's going to calm your storm. He's going, to, he's going to take you to the place that you're going to look back at this storm and wonder why in the world you were ever, ever so upset about it. Be of good cheer. Jesus will calm your storm. Number four, John 16, and verse number 33. Jesus said, uh, these things have I spoken unto you that in me, you might have peace, and the world just shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <laughs> you shall have tribulation, he said there in, in uh, 
and verse number 33. But Jesus said we can be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. He has overcome sin in our lives. He washed my sins away when he saved me. The Bible tells us that, that our sins have been erased. They've been washed away. The Bible says they're in the depths of the sea behind God's back, never to be remembered again. Now, there are people that will remember your sins. There are people that will bring it up to you, throw it in your face. There are people that will try to discourage you. And, and sometimes the devil will come up to you and say, how in the world can you be able to go to heaven? Look at what you've done. Look at where you've been. Look at the sins you've committed. And all you can say is, yes, you're absolutely right, Satan. Positively. I deserve to go to hell for what I've done. <laughs> but my sins are under the blood. Under the blood. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. But things are hard, sure. He has overcome the world. He takes care of sin in our lives. He will take care of sorrow in your life. The Bible tells me in Revelation 21 and verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Isn't that great that one of these days, if that's going to take place, he's going to wipe the tears from our eyes. There'll be no more sin, no more sorrow. There'll be no more sickness. Hallelujah. My biggest problem today is not the devil. My biggest problem is not other people. My biggest problem is looking at me in the mirror every day myself. That's my biggest problem. And Jesus said, you can overcome the flesh. You can over, Jesus overcame the world and you can overcome the, the temptations and the, the sorrows of this life. I'm so thankful I've got a savior that's overcome the world. Amen. Now look at Acts chapter number, I'm sorry, my eyes were watering so bad. Acts chapter 23 and verse 11. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Now, the apostle Paul had started for Jerusalem. And Jesus told him to, that he's going to take him to Jerusalem to be a witness for him and uh, not to worry about any of the things that have happened along the journey. I will take you to Jerusalem. Everything's going to be okay. Now, when they got in the midst of the Mediterranean, a great storm came up called Eurycliden. And when that storm hit, the Bible says that the ship was tossed back and forth for two weeks. They saw no star, stars, moon, no sun. It was just black. It was dark. The storms were raging. The ship was being tossed and battered by the waves and the storms. And, and the Bible says they, that they threw all the, the weight overboard, thinking it may be being lighter. It would float out the storm better. Said so after two weeks, they gave up hope. After two weeks, they'd done everything that they knew that they could possibly do. Isn't that how God works? He wants you to get you to the place where you've done everything that you possibly can, and then God steps on the scene. Amen, Brother Timothy. Good to have you on board, too. Amen. Looks like Amy is on board. I don't see your name, but I see a picture up there. Amy, if you're on tonight, Amy Rollins, it's good to have you with us, and uh, I hope uh, there'll be a blessing to you. But But I want to tell you, that in these storms, they told the apostle Paul, you're going to Jerusalem, you're going to Rome. You're going to Rome and you're going to teach those people and share my word. And you're going to write some letters while you're there. And eventually you're going to give your life for the gospel's sake there. I want to take you over. And after two weeks where they had endured the storms and the wind, the waves, all the, all of that was going on. The Bible says that the apostle Paul got into the belly of the ship away from everybody else and began to have a heart to heart talk with Jesus. And Jesus told him there in uh, verse number 22, I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. The apostle Paul came forth with a word from God. And he told them that Jesus said, be of good cheer. There is no reason, no need whatsoever to be afraid. Now, if you read the, the whole of chapter 27 in the book of Acts, you'll see that that ship came to an island. And at that island, the, the, the soldiers there, afraid that the prisoners would all escape, said, I think we ought to just go ahead and kill them and throw their bodies in the water. 
And the apostle Paul said, no, no, don't do that. These men need to get to shore. These men need to be carried into Rome. And the Bible says that the ship was broken, but everybody on that ship made it to shore, some on broken pieces, but they all made it home. Now, every time I read that, I can only, it it really touches my heart. It says that all of them made it to shore. Some of them swam in, but some were on broken pieces. And I think of those Christians that I know today, myself included, whose lives were broken, whose lives were, were broken by sin, whose lives were broken by circumstances, whose, whose hearts were, were stabbed by people saying they were their friends. And, and there's a lot of times that it feels like, Lord, I'm so broken, I can't possibly be of any use or any value to anybody, much less you. And God says, it's okay. My body was broken for you. And because you've been broken does not disqualify you in service for Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 18, if you get a chance, you ought to read that, about a potter making a a a vessel on the clay on the wheel. And the Bible says that in the potter's hand, while the potter was making it, that vessel was marred. That vessel was marred. It was scarred. It was disfigured. And you know that the potter didn't take that clay and throw it in the trash can. The Bible says he made it again another vessel. If your life has been broken and your will has been broken and your life has been cluttered up with sin and the garbage of this world, you can take that to the master potter and say, Lord, forgive me of what I've done. God, cleanse my heart. Make me another vessel. Make me brand new. And the Bible says that that God will take you and fix you, and mold you, and make you a new vessel fit for the master service. I'm so thankful that God will do that. When I pastored a church in Greer many years ago, I had a man that I worked with that asked me one day, he said that he had he had, had some, some pretty rough knocks in his life, and he was married, he was married for the third time now, and he said he wanted to serve the Lord, But a little church where he lived in the community where he lived told him that because he had been divorced and remarried, that there was nothing he could do. And I looked at him and I said, you need to come to our church because our church is just like Jesus. It delights in using those people that the world says is of no value. I'm so thankful God will take broken vessels and God will take broken hearts and broken lives and people that the world thinks are the garbage heaps of this world. And he says, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Because I will give you protection in the midst of your trials. Not only that, but I will use you. I will let you be a servant in my in my kingdom. Don't quit because of circumstances in your life. Because the, your past is messed up. If 99% of those super righteous Pharisees that tell you that God can't use you, if 99% of their lives were bared open for public view, you would see that their lives are just as messed up as yours was. You see, that's why God said he would use you. There was a woman at the well in John chapter number four. She went in the middle of the day. So she was a Samaritan woman, which is a half breed, half Jew, half Gentile. And she was living there in this city. And it was so hot during the middle of the day that nobody went to the well to get water. It was just too hot. They all went in the early morning or in the evening. But this woman, being a Samaritan, was ashamed of herself, ashamed of her sin, and ashamed of her life. So she went in the heat of the day to get the water from the well to take back to her home. And she met a man by the well named Jesus. 
And Jesus asked her to dip in and get her some water, and she did. And then he said, ma'am, go get your husband. And she said, sir, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right, you don't. And the man you're living with right now is not your husband. He said, you've had five, but you don't have one now. And she looked at him and said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. And the Bible tells us, now this is what I like, this half-breed Samaritan woman who had been divorced five times was shacking up with somebody, living a sinner's life, a broken life, a, a, a wasted life, if you want to look at it that way, ran down into the city, left her water pot, but she took the whole well of living water with her and shared the gospel to those men and women in that city. And the Bible says that many were saved, many believed because of her testimony. God used that broken vessel. God took her life that was offered freely to the master. And he said, I don't care what your past is. I'm concerned about the present and I'm concerned about the future. And if you'll let me use you, I will use you to the glory of God. Hallelujah. He said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I will protect you in the midst of your trials, and I will use you if you'll make yourself available. Hallelujah. Man, what a Savior we serve. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what your past is, and we've all got one, and it doesn't matter what people say about your past because God has forgiven it, and God has said, be of good cheer. Your sins have been forgiven. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I'm going to take you home one day. <laughs> Be of good cheer. Jesus will calm the storms in your life. Jesus will take care of the sin, the sorrow, the sickness, all these things. He will take care of that. And I want to tell you this last one. Acts 27 and verse number 25. After the apostle Paul had been in the belly of the ship praying for those, those nights, he came forth and he told those men that God was going to take us front, you take us to the other side, take us to that island. He said that uh, be of good cheer, there'll be no loss of any man's life. But then he also said here, be of good cheer. I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. What do you mean? Be of good cheer, we can trust this Bible. Be of good cheer, we can trust the Savior. The Bible said in John chapter 14 and verse number 1, Hold on a minute. Let me get over there. I thought I had it marked. I don't. John chapter number 14 and verse number one. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And it said that... Uh, Thomas looked at him. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm glad that we have not only a Savior that loves us and has overcome the world and that forgives us of our sins and is coming back to take us home. <laughs> But he's also given us a book that we can believe and trust and read and live by. That's the Bible. Now, I want to try to do something here. Uh, I can't really play my guitar well with this thumb. I've tried it the other day, and it just fill my heartbeat when I do that. But I want to try to do this, and this is a song that I learned many, many years ago. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day! Glorious day that will be 
What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There will be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand. And leads me through the promised land. What a day. Glorious day that will be. Amen. I want to tell you. I want to encourage you. If there's any way that I can help you. Or any of these men, women on this on this Facebook page can help you in any way, please, please let us know. Uh, send me a PM. If, if I can be of any help to an encouragement, help you with the scripture, whatever I can do for you, just send me a PM and I will, I will do whatever I can to give you encouragement and help. And just remember, Jesus said, be of good cheer. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Until next time. Tomorrow, don't forget, sometime during the day, we'll have five minutes in the Word. We love you.